Hi, hello everyone. Uh, hi Fabian. <laughs> hi David, hi Linda, hi everybody else. Right, my, my main interest in graveyards is not the graveyards themselves, but rather the rituals that take place in the graveyards and objects taken out of the graveyards to use for ritual. Researching in Singapore and Malaysia, the religious landscape is very different to Taiwan's. The two deities most commonly channeled through spirit mediums are both hell deities or underworld deities. Uh, Taiwan, they're known as Chi Ye Ba Ye. You get them in the Ba Jia Jiang and giant puppets, but not channeled through donkey spirit mediums. In Singapore, they're known as Tai Ye and Dia Ye. And because of their association with the underworld and tortures and therefore death, they also have a very strong association with graveyards. And perform rituals there primarily in uh, ghost month, lunar seventh month. And here you see the same uh, two deities as in the previous photo, as channeled through their spirit mediums. You notice on this photograph, they both have a little piece of sticky paper stuck to their tongues. That's actually an opium wrap. And when the tradition first began, uh, they would always smoke opium when they were channeling the deities, which is still very common in Malaysia, but in Singapore, there's not that much opium around, so it's uh, unusual to come across it. The two deities, their family names are Shebian and Famu Jo, and they are from Fujian province, from Anxi, and their pseudo graves are now located above Anxi City God Temple, Anxi Sheng Hong Miao. But they're not real graves, they're more like memorials, because during the Cultural Revolution, the cemetery was destroyed, the graveyard smashed, the bones scattered, so nobody knows what was actually written on the original graves or where exactly they were. So they just put a few bones of different bodies underneath each and they've now become a huge tourist pilgrimage site for worshippers from Singapore and Malaysia. So the reason you have so many cemetery rituals in Singapore is because the, the cemeteries are slowly disappearing. Uh, the master plan for, for land use allowed the government to basically dig up cemeteries willy-nilly as they like to build what they call HDB, Housing Board Development Blocks. And there's not many graveyards left. The only public graveyard left is called Cha Chu Gang uh, Cemetery. And then in 1998, legislation was passed saying that graves have to be exhumed after 15 years. So when you get buried, you can actually just rent the plot for 15 years and you're, you're dug up. And because so many graves are dug up, you have this huge surplus of used coffin wood. And as you can see in the, the, the photograph there, the coffin wood is used to make ritual objects. Um, largely miniature coffins, which are either used to trap exorcised spirits after an exorcism, which are then released during seventh month to go to the underworld, or they use for the underworld deities on the temple altars to actually rest on during the day when they come into the, the, the human realms. So my first experience with graveyard rituals was in 2010. I'd just been to a, a temple once. And on my first trip there, they said, this Saturday we're going to the cemetery to collect some medicines. Do you want to come with? And I'm very hands-on with my research. And so of course I said yes. Uh, the, the day I went there, uh, a girl turned up at the um, temple and she was crying because she had leukemia. She was there with the family and the doctors had told her it was incurable. And the spirit medium, the Tayapak medium, performed a ritual, like very impromptu, that said the real healing comes through graveyard medicines. So the next night I found myself at two o'clock in the morning in the middle of this vast cemetery. It's almost as big as the, the one in, in Liu Zhongli. And I wasn't particularly afraid of spirits or ghosts. I was scared of the people because there were only like 20 big chunky guys and a hell deity and I was walking through a place full of open graves. 
And I was kind of thinking horror movie, you know, spirit for a spirit. This is this is it, baby. But it wasn't. <laughs> it, it turned out to be really friendly people. Uh, so that was my first experience, and it got, it got me intrigued by graveyard rituals. Then in 2017, as you can see written, there was a joint statement made saying that most of Trochagon, well, it's an exaggeration, about 30% of the cemetery involving digging up 45,000 Chinese graves was going to be undertaken to expand the military air base. And there's always been graveyard rituals in Trochagon Cemetery, but after that particular statement, I think you could call it a form of everyday resistance, as in Scott's everyday form of resistance. The, the number of graveyard rituals increased so much on an average weekend during Ghost Month, you get up to 10,000 people in the graveyard. And 10 p.m. was actually rush hour in the graveyard. There were traffic jams of vehicles going in and out to do their rituals. So now our Sorry? Uh, not to worry, most of the rest is photographs. So hopefully the photographs won't be missing. Okay, so anyway, seventh month of graveyard rituals. Uh, I went in 2017, and most spirit mediums chose to perform rituals in the plots which were going to be exhumed. The most popular was the one to aborted fetus and dead babies and dead children. And so this is the, 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 the ritual space. And the, the lights you can see, the, the, the two green lights, are two different underworld deity temples where they perform their rituals. At the front of the cemetery plot, it's quite spooky really. You have, this is two photographs of the, the same altar. And so in front of, well, on the, on the right, you can see that it's reported fetuses and they've got two little cute babies about this big and they're both little western children which is quite spooky in the middle of the night it's seeing two little western children lit up by incense and red candles and the offerings they leave are, are sweets, candies, open bottles of sweet drinks etc 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 things that they assume aborted fetuses and dead babies will want to consume in the afterlife and the big mound you can see up there is Joss money and that's all going to be burnt for the aborted fetuses because their graves will be dug up by 2020 and all the people sitting on the floor worshipping them in front of more very 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 sweet offerings. The main altar apart from that of the graveyard is to the two underworld deities Tuyapek and Diabe and the their favorite drink is Guinness. They love Guinness. It could be the imagery of the, the black and the dark, which goes with their imagery of darkness and the yin energy. Uh, but everyone that goes there to perform the rituals makes offerings to the two deities. Uh, you can see them there. And there, and there, uh, are the Guinness. And there's basically Guinness on every single underworld altar that you go to in Singapore or Malaysia. Uh, something also quite ubiquitous to the Singapore and Malaysian uh, graveyard rituals is the burning of the ghost king, Dasha Ya, at the end of the festival. So once the offerings have been presented and divination blocks of way have been cast to make sure that the, the spirits are happy with the offerings, the money will be burned and on top of the money they put Dasha Ya. And so the ghost king as he burns, actually supervises the removal of the spirits from the graveyard back to the underworld, at least in theory. And so this particular night I went, there were two spirit mediums. The one on the left is Tuyapek, um, or Chia. Um, and his just basically on his rattan fan are two coins which is about to drop to make sure the offerings are acceptable to the, the, the fetus spirits. And on the right is the underworld god of filial piety. His uh, hokien name is Hao Ju Ye. 
and for the, the offerings uh, for ancestors and wandering spirits are put on the table and the offerings for uh, aborted fetuses and, and dead babies, uh, uh, candies, etc. are put on the floor. The idea being that after death you maintain the same physical shape as you had in life. And so obviously the, the fetuses can't reach what's on the table, so they leave things on the floor for them, which I thought was quite fascinating. And this is the, the Twyapek spirit medium with the deity statue of himself and the ritual area that's been uh, reserved for his particular sending off of sweets and candles and money has been outlined with candles interspersed with alternative incense sticks. So it's very, very common practice. It was quite nice. I joined in the ritual, offered my incense sticks, paid my respects. I was about to leave uh, and he says, Fabian, come back. I'm like, what's up? And he had a big box of Kentucky Fried Chicken on his altar. And he had this big hand covered in like ash and soot from the, the sending off and he just picked it up and said, eat this before you leave, it will bring you good luck. <laughs> so I didn't really have any choice, so I was eating Kentucky Fried Chicken at 2 a.m. In the, in the graveyard. Anyway, moving on. Um, I followed another, another temple's ritual in more detail. This is the main uh, Twayapek spirit medium. He's not wearing the characteristic hat. Is having his arm pierced with uh, the eight underworld generals. It could be interpreted as the eight Bagua marshals in any other circumstance, but during the seventh month, uh, the eight underworld generals that would give him the power to control the spirits in the graveyard. And once again, you can see the, the can of Guinness, so he just sat there happily smoking his cigarette, sopping his Guinness while they're sticking a needle through him. Um, on the right, you can see their dashiya, and behind that, uh, a house for the wandering spirits of ancestors to live in during the three days of ritual. There are actually 14 houses, seven for male spirits, seven for female spirits, and separate bathrooms and washrooms for each. Uh, on the left, you have the offerings to ancestors, which you are uh, basically sanctified by the Taoist priests. And next to Dasha, yeah, once again, you had the offering to fetus ghosts, fetus spirits. Uh, anthropologists here will be quite familiar with Mark Moskowitz and his work, uh, his book, incredible book, The Haunting Fetus, about fetus placation rituals in Taiwan. That tradition has never arisen in Singapore, so it's left to the, the underworld deities to actually give offerings to the, to the fetus spirit. And so that's what she speaks for itself, it's going into the Chinese cemetery. So it's not just the hell deities, it's also their followings. There's a lot of young people as well as a few elderly people. And the particular plot they chose was a, a plot to people they didn't know the identities of. So instead of having gravestones, they had a small concrete cube with a number on. And so they were number graves, once again because they were going to be exhumed. Uh, they chose this particular site and all the underworld deities invited the unknown spirits to participate with the offerings uh, which were burnt separately to those to, to the ancestors. And there were, there were a lot of hell deities there channeled through their spirit mediums. It wasn't just the one, I think there were seven in total. So you can see here dressed in black would be, be Diabe, dressed in white is Twayabe. And there's ten courts of the underworld, so you can have multiple spirit mediums channeling them because there's ten of each, there's one pair in each quarter of the underworld. And this is just before they, they, they start sending off. And you can see on the wreck all the spirit houses in the cemetery and a huge amount of just money that's been hand folded into the shape of uh, traditional Chinese coinage. Uh, the whole lot weighed several hundred tons, it was carried in six trucks, took uh, an hour and a half to set up, and they have to be sent off on special platforms provided by the National Environment Agency. It's not like in the old days where you could burn money anywhere. And Dasha Yam is placed right in the center. So you can see Dasha Yam on the left, on the right, Dashiya is there, so you can actually see from the size that's just one half 
and it was the same size in other directions. So it was an absolutely huge sending off. Uh, and here's everyone just watching. And of course, as it gets hot, you have to back off. And you can just about see the frame of Dashi yeah, burning there. And then there was the offerings to our ancestors. And as soon as it was lit, the underworld editor said, time to go, don't look back. You look back, you might get followed. We're going back to the temple. And then there's a great ritual to brush off all the spirits that might have followed you back. Uh, this was uh, an altar they set up for the city god and Tayaba and the Abbe, and you can see the sending off from the flames in the background. And changing the subject, I started interested in objects associated with cemeteries. I went to a luck promoting coffin ritual in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, once again, it's the seventh month, takes place at night with five different hell deities, and the coffin is raised on either side you have a little staircase going up and going down and the key thing to, key thing to look at is this candle and incense if you can see where, where that is it's right in the, in the center of the coffin and on this picture you can see the same can, candle and incense with two chains and the, the chains represent the borders of the blood river which leads or divides the, the underworld gate from the, the nether realms between heaven and earth. And to cross them, you have to cross the Naiha Bridge. And so the idea is that when you get into the, like, step up into the, the coffin, you're crossing the Naiha Bridge, you lie down in the coffin, and you're there in the underworld because you crossed over the chain. And when you come out the other side and step down, you cross the other side of the Bayer Herb Bridge, bringing you back into the human realms. It was, it was a brilliant ritual. And here you can see me jumping into the coffin. And here you can see me lying in the coffin. They put, um, they put uh, just money here because they believe that's where the spirit comes and goes from. So it's to keep your spirit inside your body. And they cover your eyes so you can't see the, the hell there it is in the underworld because it's too scary. And then, of course, they close the coffin lid and leave you in there. <laughs> and that's uh, so obviously got somebody else to take the photograph for me. But that's actually me lying in the coffin. And each of the underworld deities takes turns running up and down on the coffin, jumping up and down on it, <laughs> tapping it with their flags, blessing it. And then, then you get out the other side for good luck. And it, it's a really good experience. I'd recommend it to everybody, young and old. Uh, I'm just going to finish briefly with uh, a ritual, another ritual I went to, because it's the, the biggest graveyard ritual in Asia. It takes place in Difangfu in Malacca and has approximately 5,000 people for a single graveyard ritual. Uh, this is just one small part of the temple, and up on the temple is the Jade Emperor's Palace. You need about two minutes. Okay, great. Uh, and the chairs on the left are for wandering spirits, so not in the graveyard, but have come into the temple grounds to watch a procession. The temple is completely surrounded by graveyards, as far as you can see. It's really quite spooky there. And they burn giant clothes for all the spirits. They do spirit uh, spells to multiply the clothes as enough for everybody. And it's all lit in purple fluorescent light, which is lovely. Uh, and these are all burnt. And the two main deities again uh, in their palaquins, which are carried to the graveyard of uh, Tuyabe and Diabe. And the spirit medium channeling Tuyabe uh, blesses all four or five thousand people that are going to go into the cemetery before they go in. And then you walk barefoot through the cemetery, which is really painful. It's got very, very sharp rocks. I guess if you're local and you walk around in bare feet, it's fine. But for an overweight Westerner, it's actually quite a painful experience. Um, gives you a number idea of the number of people. It's absolutely huge. And the, the green light on the left is uh, the palaquin. As you can see, it's, it's quite big. And that is just taken a standing at the back of the procession. The front of the procession is completely out of sight, caught for a mile away in the graveyard. OK, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks yes. very much. All right, thank you, Professor Graham. Uh, we have about 